I can have the, the first piece. There you so. go. Mm -hmm. Is it good? Yeah, very good. my fellow soulmates and food lovers and welcome to another episode of Eileen's Kitchen Stories. I'm super excited because today we're gonna make the holy grail of cakes, of Austrian cakes, which is the Zacher Torte. Well, I haven't done it myself yet, but I'm going to follow the instructions that the Hotel Zacher was giving in their cookbook, in their recipe book. We're gonna follow that today and then let's see what comes out. I hope it's gonna be the perfect Zacher Torte because I can't wait to taste it. Okay, let's start right in. First off, I'm gonna cut the vanilla put. We will need only half of the vanilla put. And then the other one you can actually use for making vanilla sugar. So right here, just scrape out all the lovely vanilla seeds. And I'm going to pop this onto the butter. Okay, now onto the chocolate. We need to heat up half of our chocolate because part of the chocolate is going to get into the cake and make sure you use quality dark chocolate so in this case i'm using some of lind we're going to heat this up in a bain marie which is over some hot boiling water in order to let it melt very softly we don't want to burn it it should not curdle it shouldn't get lumpy so the bain marie is the perfect way to do this Meanwhile, while the chocolate is melting, we need to separate our eggs because for the cake base we need the egg yolks and the egg whites we're going to form into a meringue. Now our chocolate is melted and it's perfect, but it's still a little bit too runny and too hot. So we need to pop it aside and carry on with making our regular cake mixture. We need to pop in our milk into the food processor alongside with the icing sugar. And now we need to beat this up until it's a very creamy consistency. It is creamy enough now, so we can pop in one egg yolk at a time. And now it's the perfect time to incorporate the chocolate. Now that this is done, we can start making our meringue. The important part for making the meringue is that you use the egg whites while they're very very cold so you need to get them directly and straight out of the fridge. Just make sure you whisk it until it is very stiff and we're going to do that with a pinch of salt and just when they start foaming soft peaks I'm going to add the sugar. This is what I mean when I talk about the soft peaks. And now we need to take about 110 grams of the sugar in order to make the perfect meringue for this. As you can see right here, the mixer is going into one direction. This is actually essential for making the perfect meringue. And also, keep the whisk at the highest possible speed. Um, it's not falling. <laughs> We're gonna take part of the mixture and pop it in here. If we use all of it right now, it's not going to combine that well and it's going to be very lumpy and we're going to lose all the air. We just need to fold it in. While we are folding it in, we're also going to pop all the flour in in a second as well. And now we can pour in the mixture into our buttered and floured spring form. This is a spring form which is about 22 centimeters, I would say 22, 23 centimeters. And all of the mixture is going to go in there. And now we need to level this off. And the book says to bake it for about 55 to 60 minutes at 170 degrees. And then the first 10 to 15 minutes, you need to leave the door open just a tad bit. I'm not quite sure why, it doesn't say in the book, but we're gonna do it that way. Put a wooden spoon in between and then you have enough heat going out of the oven. Off you go, baby. Hope you're gonna bake well. 
Now in the recipe it says we need to have it upside down and then let it cool off. So we're gonna do that. Now that after 25 to 30 minutes, I've actually slid it out of the spring form and now I let it cool off completely like this. In the meantime, I'm going to heat up the apricot jam, which is actually called Marillen Marmelade or Marillen Confiture. And I cannot point it out enough. Please use quality, high quality products because this cake just deserves it so much. Now guys, you may know the story behind the Zaha Torte already. Franz Zaha, he was in the second year of apprenticeship at the court of Prince Metternich in 1832 and he was given a task to make a nice dessert for a festivity in the evening. The head chef, he fell sick, so he had to do it. It wasn't as famous at that time, but it became really, really famous when his son, Edward, when he finalized the cake at the house of Damon. The way we eat it now is really the version of his son Eduard. And that's also the reason why today we have two different types of Zaha Torte. The original Zaha Torte, which pertains to the Hotel Zaha. And then we have the second one, which pertains to the huge confectionery shop Damon. Enough with the history, let's go on and chop off the head of the cake. Because in order to have the beautiful cake afterwards, we want to have it leveled off. I've actually changed the baking tray now so that I can easily swap it around while cutting. We're gonna use these two. With that, we're gonna fix the first and the second layer so that we know exactly how to put it on there again at the same spot so that it doesn't look like uneven. In the recipe it says you can add some rum. So no one really knows is there rum inside or isn't there rum inside. The sauce that I have, which is my boyfriend, <laughs> he said that he tasted some alcohol in the cake. So I'm going to put some rum into this cake and I'm going to do this for both of the cake bases. The apricot jam is now hot and very smooth, but we need to strain it as well in order to get out the lumpy bits and pieces. And now it's time we can pop our apricot jam on top. And if you don't have a palette knife, like me, I don't have a palette knife, I'm just going to use a very wide knife. So spread this evenly across the whole surface. And now we can take the second one. And again, sprinkle some of the rum on top. And now we're gonna spread the rest of our apricot jam on top. All of it, because we're going to cover the sides as well. But for the glaze, we will need a syrup. And for that, we're gonna take 125 ml of water and heat it up together with the sugar. We need to let it simmer for a good six minutes and then afterwards we need to let it cool off. This is very important because if we pop in the chocolate too early, it's going to burn and it's going to be lumpy. After about now five to seven minutes of resting, I can now pop in the chocolate and let it melt in the mixture. Keep stirring until you have a nice, lovely glaze. The mixture actually looks beautiful and perfect, but it's still a little bit too runny and we need to let it cool off just a tad more and then we can actually spread it out. Otherwise, if we're going to spread it out now onto the cake, it's gonna run everywhere and we don't have a thick layer of this lovely chocolate glaze. It is very important to let the glaze set at room temperature and also if you don't want to have any sweat on top please don't put it in the fridge. So guys this is the ready-made cake and I'm super excited to dive into it but before that I want to introduce you to someone this is Jörg who's my boyfriend and also he's the cameraman Hello. and he has been in Vienna 
to try the original Zaha Torte from the Hotel Zaha. So I want to have um, yeah his opinion on this cake, on, the, on this recipe actually, which is from the cookbook. I can have the, the first piece. There you so. go. Mm -hmm. Is it good? Yeah, very good. Mm, I think mm, the one I tried in Vienna was more drier. Oh, it was, it was dry. Yeah. <laughs> the top layer is here more, 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 more liquid. It's moist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope you understand what I mean. I actually like it a lot, mm -hmm. and it is said that to that it's going to taste even better if you leave it for a couple of days. So just leave it outside, cover it with something. Don't put it in the fridge. Maybe five to seven days, and then it should taste even more delicious. Thanks to all my Austrian friends for the <laughs> Austrian recipes. Yes, thank you. Thank you to Misha in that case. <laughs> for example, yes. And guys, why don't you just check out all the other recipes from Austria as well. This is possible if you subscribe to my channel and then give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I hope to see you next time. Bye. Bye bye.